NVIDIA have announced their 5090, 5080, 5070 Ti and 5070 graphics cards. And while I generally think NVIDIA cards are pretty good, albeit a little overpriced, when it comes to their marketing, you've got to watch them like a hawk. One claim that stood out to me was that the NVIDIA 5070 was going to give 1490 performance for just $549. Now, it sounds awesome, right? Well, as you'll see, there's slightly more to it than that. To better illustrate my point, I think we need to wind back the clock two years to when Jensen stood on stage and introduced the NVIDIA 4080 12 gig. Now, this was a card that used a completely different GPU die to its 16 gigabyte bigger brother, which for all intents and purposes kind of made it a 70 class card dressed up as an 80 class card. Thankfully, no one fell for it. We all called it out and as a result, the card was unlaunched to then reappear as the 4070 Ti later on with a $100 price drop. Why am I telling you all this? Well, those that remember the slides will also recall how the 4080 12 gigabyte was said to be two to four times faster than the 3080 Ti. That was a massive claim. And how was it possible? Well, frame generation, which is really comparing apples to oranges. Was the card two to four times faster when you disabled frame generation? No, of course it wasn't. So given all of this, I'm sure you can understand my reluctance to buy into the claim that the 5070 will give 4090 performance at just $549. I'm sure it may do under certain conditions that heavily favour the new 50 series architecture and feature set, but if we were to load up, say, Call of Duty Warzone or Counter-Strike 2 or Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 and only use the raw horsepower of the card, maybe with a touch of DLSS upscaling, would the 5070 give 4090 performance then? I doubt it. And why? Well, during the presentation, after announcing the 5070's pricing to much fanfare, Jensen said it wouldn't be possible without artificial intelligence, which tells me we're not talking about raw horsepower when claiming the 5070 gives 4090 performance. Similar claims were made across all the other cards in the lineup. The 5090 claimed to be twice as fast as the 4090, uh, that was mentioned on stage, and now on their website, the 5080 is claimed to be twice as fast as the 4080, and you guessed it, the 5070 Ti is claimed to be twice as fast as the 4070 Ti. Of course, NVIDIA have provided us with some benchmarking data, sort of, uh, so let's see if we can make some more sense of what's going on. Now, keep in mind this data comes from NVIDIA, and they're going to want to show their GPUs off in the best possible light, so keep that in mind. So starting off at the right hand side of this chart, it's looking like a slam dunk for the 50 series, giving credence to their 2x performance claims. But how are they getting there? Looking at the small print, you can see with their 5070 testing, they're running at 1440p with DLSS super resolution set to quality with DLSS ray reconstruction on both the 4070 and the 5070. So that's an apples to apples comparison so far. But here's where the extra performance comes from. Look at where they say the 4070 is running frame generation and the 50 series is running MFG, that's multi-frame generation. So now with 50 series, frame generation can generate up to three frames for every one traditionally rendered frame. That is what's driving those twice as fast performance claims, I'm sure of it. And it gets more interesting if we dive a little bit deeper into the uh, small print there, there's an important note on a Plague Tale Requiem. Now this game only supports DLSS 3, meaning that the 50 series card cannot make use of multi-frame generation, which actually gives us more of an apples to apples comparison between the 4070 and the 5070. Now the data is a bit woolly as we're not being given kind of actual FPS numbers, it's all a multiple of the 4070's performance being used as a baseline, but the performance uplift here is much more in line with what I would expect between generations. NVIDIA provide the same data for all the other models in the range, and as you can see here as we step through the 5070 Ti, the 5080, and the 5090, it's a very similar story. Massive, massive uplifts in Cyberpunk, Alan Wake 2, Black Myth Wukong, not so much with a Plague Tale Requiem. As for Far Cry 6, it doesn't support DLSS, um, so what we can see here is another good indicator of raw performance between the two generations, which again is completely in line with what I would expect, and frankly it's nice to see some data that's kind of free of all this frame generation nonsense. 
Now, to those of you that are taking to the comments to tell me to turn on frame generation and that it's awesome, let me just say outright, I do not like frame generation. They are fake frames. I much prefer my frames to be real. Thank you very much, especially when it comes to ensuring the competitive integrity of like online first person shooters. The only game I'll tolerate it in is Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, I've spoken about this at length on my dedicated Flight Sim channel, so any simmers in the audience, be sure to head over there and like and subscribe. And the reason why I will tolerate it in Flight Sim is because the levels of motion on screen are very, very minimal compared to a twitchy first-person shooter. In an ideal world, I'd turn it off, but it does help me to consistently achieve 4K 60fps. Until there's such a time that I can get 4K 60 without frame generation, that is a trade-off I'm willing to make. Okay, frame gen moan over. Let's look at the RAM allocations for each card. Starting at the top with the 5090, we've got 32 gigs of GDDR7, giving a total memory bandwidth of 1,792 gigabytes per second versus 1,008 on the 4090, so a decent uplift there. Over on the 5080, uh, we've got 16 gigs of GDDR7 memory, providing up to 960 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. That is a 34% increase compared to the RTX 4080's 717. The 5070 Ti also has 16 gigs of GDDR7 memory. However, it's running slightly slower, giving a memory bandwidth of 896 gigabytes per second. Uh, versus the 960 of its bigger brother, the 5080. Though it is a 78% increase compared to the 4070 Ti's uh, meager 504 gigabytes per second. Now this was an area for which the 4070 Ti was often criticized and one that the 4070 Ti super remedied to some degree with a wider memory bus, uh, but I digress. The 5070 RAM capacity will probably cause the biggest stir, in my opinion. I would imagine coming in at 12 gigabytes of GDDR7, running at 672 gigabytes per second of total memory bandwidth, which, when compared to the GeForce 4070's 504 gigabytes per second, is an improvement, just not a, uh, a huge one, particularly. Um, now, I'm not particularly happy that the 5070 is running at 12 gigabytes, it kind of feels like 12 gigabytes is quickly becoming the new eight gigabytes. And I do worry that over time it might not age so well. I'd really like to see 16 gigabytes as the baseline for anything 70 class and up. It would feel fairer to me to keep 12 gigabytes for the 60 class. Uh, lastly, let's discuss pricing. The 5090 increased in price versus its 4090 predecessor going up um, from an MSRP of $15.99 now to $19.99 USD, of course. The 5080 is coming in at $9.99 USD, so that's sharing the same pricing slot as the 4080 Super that came before it. I think NVIDIA have learned their lesson here, really, trying to charge $11.99 for the vanilla 4080 when it came out. Uh, so that's something, I guess. But I think it's quite clear that NVIDIA are trying to create more of a gap between the 80 and the 90 class of card. So it would seem that the high end gets uh, even higher. The 5070 Ti comes in at 749 USD, seemingly positioned as like a halfway house for those that don't want to spend $1,000 on a GPU but want something a bit more than the regular 70 class card. And speaking of which, the 5070 comes in at 549 USD, which I was pleasantly surprised by as this was the price that the vanilla 4070 drop to once the 4070 super released so it's nice that they're retaining this price rather than making the 5070 take the place of the 4070 super at 599 so 549 is a good result indeed ultimately though the 5070 is a huge amount of money and hearing me say what i just said out loud it's uh, not lost on me how conditioned we've become to high GPU prices where we'll celebrate the most mediocre pricing situations. Uh, make no mistake, NVIDIA are absolutely taking advantage of price anchoring in the hope to get us to part with our uh, hard-earned pennies, which is fine. I guess lots of companies do it. It's uh, you know business 101, to be honest with you. But we should at least be aware of what's being done to us and go into it with our eyes open. And now with that, I guess we have to sit tight and wait for the reviews. I'd encourage you all to do that before deciding on anything. Wait for Hardware Unboxed, wait for Jay, wait for Gamers Nexus. They'll give it to you straight and cut through all of this marketing speak that we are currently wading through 
right now. Let me know in the comments if you're considering a 50 series card. For me, being on a 4080 Super, I don't really feel like I've got a graphics card problem that needs solving. So my initial reaction is to stay put. Of course, there's always the argument that I need it for my YouTube channel. So uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll see, I guess. Anyway, folks, thank you so much for watching. Leaving a like really helps the video and the channel a ton and get subbed so you don't miss out on any future content. I really do need to figure out a content plan for this channel. I've been so busy on my Flight Sim channel. I've left this one uh, to kind of uh, die on the vine, I'm afraid. So the plan is in 2025 to do a lot more on this channel. I just need to figure out what that is. So any thoughts and comments are welcome on that. Anyway, take care of yourselves. Be good to each other. And I will see you in the next video.